We have breaking news now for you on the West Coast. I'm Josh Shelley, alongside Amy Robach. You are seeing here a map of Connecticut. Connecticut State Police and SWAT teams are now responding to a school shooting at an elementary school in Newtown. It's roughly two hours to the north and east of New York City. The images you see here, children being led from Sandy Hook Elementary School. It is the district's largest school, and we can tell you that one shooter is dead at Sandy Hook Elementary. The school now cleared of shooting. Newtown police say there is at least one other person shot in addition to the shooter. State police, meanwhile, telling ABC News that they are still treating this as an active shooter situation right now. School officials, meanwhile, have mobilized at a local firehouse. State emergency management officials confirming that ambulances and other units are en route and staging near the school. Again, these are pictures from uh, the parking lot of the school. First responders on scene there. Police also believe they may have located the suspect's car. Again, as we uh, just are getting information here, and again, it's Sandy Hook Elementary School, about 15 miles from Danbury, another major city in Connecticut. Again, two hours to the north and east of New York City. And obviously, of, of incredible concern is the extent of the injuries that may have occurred there at Sandy Hook Elementary School. We do know, according to the Newtown Bee, who is on the scene, uh, that there was one child carried from the school by a police officer they witnessed, apparently seriously wounded. We know that other injuries have been reported. We know that those emergency personnel who have gathered there en masse have set up triage facilities, but the extent of those injuries are unclear right now. We know that, according to the website of Newtown School, they say this afternoon buses and kindergarten are canceled. The school district superintendent issuing this statement due to reports of a shooting as yet unconfirmed. The district is taking preventative measures by putting all schools in lockdown until we ensure safety of all students and staff. So that is both public and private schools in the area all on lockdown at this hour. We can take you through a timeline as uh, it's come available. This according uh, to the current.com, that is uh, the website of the Hartford Current, uh, that police responded to a shooting at 9.40, roughly 9.40 a.m. Eastern time. Of course, the shooter was in fact in the main office of the school. Again, unconfirmed reports of two shooters. We do, of course, now we can confirm that one shooter has been killed, another perhaps at large. We do not have that confirmed. And again, as of 1030 Eastern, students were still being led, as you see the students here, led from the school by their teachers. Again, and we can tell you now, it is an active shooter scene, though the school itself has been cleared. Uh, we did receive reports as well that the FBI SWAT team was on scene. We want to now uh, bring in a former FBI special agent and uh, GMA correspondent, Brad Garrett, joining us by phone. And Brad, we now have these reports that a SWAT team from the FBI has responded along with state police. As they lock down that school, what is the first thing they're looking to do? To ensure that they've got the situation contained, Josh. The problem is you still don't know, or they don't know, perhaps, how many shooters they might have. Have they done anything else to the school or the grounds? Think of Klebold and Harris at Columbine, who had booby-trapped the place with a number of, of bombs. So it's, it's all of that you've got to focus on. And the second thing is, do you have any kids or teachers or administrators injured that you've got to get out of the building to save their life? And Brad, we know that, as we mentioned, one shooter is confirmed dead. They do believe there may have been a second shooter. They say they have cleared the school, so I'm imagining that search may go beyond, well beyond the school district, looking for a potential uh, person at large. Well, exactly, and, and perhaps the, the deceased shooter will be the lead as to who the second person is, if, in fact, there is a second person. Because I'll tell you, Amy, the problem in these cases is that people sometimes see things that aren't exactly accurate, the eyewitness issue, where there might only be one shooter, but people, because they caught it a certain way, believe there's more than one. Could well be two, but keep that in mind. Again, and Brad, uh, while the district has asked that parents not flood uh, district phones uh, with phone calls, obviously every parent here wants to know that their children is safe. I'm certain uh, many parents uh, now making their way to the school. Uh, what would you tell parents Parents right now as they are making their way to an active crime scene? Well, 
typically what the police do is set up a choke point at these schools where they can go and check in with an officer and find out exactly what they do know because the problem is figuring out where all the kids are, who's been accounted for, who has not, is going to take a while. And so the real key is keeping parents informed, keeping them off the phone, and keeping them away from the school. 